Jessie Tor. We are getting our caravan ready to be sent to get a box installed on it. So I think we'll make this video about what the chassis is, what it's made of, a couple of features that we've put in the chassis and a couple of things that we haven't, but we may look at doing some upgrades later. And possibly talk through some quite controversial things we may have done that I know that quite a few people aren't really going to agree with. But what we've built is a galvanized steel chassis. I originally wanted to do an aluminium one just to be fancy but I was kind of talked out of it because the weight saving versus the strength requirement wasn't quite as much as I was hoping. There's a lot more material required. So we went simple with a, a steel frame and we've gone with just a leaf sprung suspension. The thinking behind this is twofold. I originally wanted to do like a full airbag setup not for the off-road capabilities, just for the <laughs> push a button and have it all level. The towing situation that we have in New Zealand, our roads are okay, they're pretty good in reality. There's quite a few potholes, but really we're towing on bitumen on reasonably nice roads that a fully independent suspension is going to be nice to tow with, but it's not 100% required. So there's only a couple of roads that we've been on where it would have been good to have an independent suspension with airbags. And that was one that was way up north. There were some corrugations in it, but it was nowhere near the level of corrugations that you would see in the outback of Australia. Our previous Jayco did bottom out in a few different places. Get, even just getting on and off our ferry that goes between the North and South Island. What we've gone for is quite a hybrid setup. It's probably got the strength of a full off-road chassis. It's got the height of an off-road chassis, but it's got the suspension of an on-road chassis. It's rated up to three and a half ton, so we're not super big. And we've gone for a chassis that is a little bit shorter than we've had in the past. This chassis is seven and a half meters long, and we've done that to help us get into campgrounds a little bit easier. Most of our campgrounds are set up for the old school caravan, so the, the sites are not huge. So having an eight and a half meter caravan, although it didn't stop us getting into places, it just made it harder. You it just, just had mean, to ring up, basically. It meant that we had to end up calling campsites, making sure that we were going to fit. Some places we even had to be put across two different sites. And also weight saving, of course. So even though we're rated to three and a half tonne, I'm aiming for is to get around 2.5 to 2.7 tonne total with all our stuff in it. We'll that would, see. That would be amazing. <laughs> there is, you'll see in this video series, there is quite a lot of stuff that we want to put in there. So that is really going to affect our weight. We've got goals and we might hit them, we might not, we'll see at the end. But ultimately at three and a half tonne, we'll have more than enough weight there for all our gear and everything we want to put in. Within the chassis, we've got tanks. Okay, so the fresh tanks are going center mounted over the axles. Obviously you want the weight close or at least around where the axles are. So the two tanks, one is mounted straight across under the chassis here and another one across here. Now the grey tank is mounted and it is a bit bigger because there is only one of them is mounted in this bay between those cross members there. So let's talk about now the brake system. We have a electric drum brake, same as a lot of the world, so that's not unusual. You will notice on some of the shots that we don't actually have any chains. In New Zealand, the chains from the drawbar to the car are actually not meant to be connected. They're not required. They're not required because you do have to have a trailer disconnect breakaway. So what the theory is, is that the trailer will break away, the breakaway will work, the brakes on the trailer will stop the trailer and your car will be disconnected rather than the chains catching the trailer and keeping it connected to the car and then potentially not braking and actually not stopping the trailer itself. I know it is different in Australia, but that's what it is here. But maybe put in the comments if you've had an experience with your trailer break away because it would be really interesting to know if you've had experience with it. I don't know either way. If I'm in Australia, I'm putting chains on. If I'm in New Zealand, I'm not. 
it's just following whatever the, the law is wherever you're driving. So. so let's next talk about the hitch. Now this is another one of those a little bit controversial things that we've put on the trailer. Um, it is just a standard ball, 50 mil ball hitch receiver. It's not an articulating hitch, but this is something that we might look at upgrading in the future. It's not what I would rather have. I'd rather have a DO35, which we will we will upgrade to during the project. But, well, should we talk about next who made the trailer? Yeah, yeah. So it was quite an ordeal to <laughs> find someone to make this trailer who was quite happy using CAD yep. it was really weird because I just thought you go to an engineering business that makes trailers, give them a CAD file and they'd be able to make it. Most of the people I spoke to wanted to hand draw it first. But also I think having someone who was able to look outside the box um, and make trailers for a different purpose. Obviously making your own caravan is not a usual thing. Mike was really, really accommodating. Mike at We Make Change, he took all of our designs, put them together, made a few tweaks here and there. We also quite often in contact with Kevin at Fiverr Pro who were making the actual box for us. And just all of the profiles and things of where the box, how the box actually fits to the chassis and all of those things were, were really a, a... Good collaboration. A really good collaboration. The chassis that we have is going to be awesome for what, what we want it to do. There is nothing I'd actually change on it right there, now. There is something that we would change on it again uh, going forward. So here we are at the one potential mistake that we've made already. This will be the first of many mistakes, but it's these wheels. Now the reason why I went with these wheels was because I was trying to save money. And you'll notice that this might be a common theme that by saving money we, we actually don't achieve what we're wanting to achieve. These are steel wheels, they look amazing. They're a 17 inch wheel with a good Nankang weight rated commercial tyre, but the problem with them is that they're quite heavy. So they do add quite a bit of weight because as you can see we've got two, two axles here, plus at the front we've got a spare wheel. The problem with this is there's five of them, they add a bit of weight because if we went with an alloy wheel, we'd be able to save potentially five to 10 kgs per wheel. The chassis itself, as it sits at the moment with the tanks in it, is about 860 kgs. It's not super light, but it's also not overly heavy. And then the box that we're putting on will weigh about another 800 kgs roughly. So we'll be 1600 in. That's where I'm thinking if we can put a ton of stuff in. We'll see how we go. We'll see how we go. So what's next? Tomorrow, driving down to Hamilton with the trailer on the back and dropping it off to Kevin to get the box put on it. So make sure you're subscribed and click that notification button to make sure you are notified of videos when we do upload and we'll talk to you in the next one. Okay, let's do it. Bring that back to this way on my face. It's my good side. We can start with chassis talk hands but then not so many jazz hands.